and it might be a small town, but it seems like it's we're early afternoon. It's getting busier up here. Definitely more activity. The goats are quieter, but the dogs and people are seem to be coming out. And by the way, that fire uh, is not getting smaller. And so the story goes on. So when I have those moments where I kind of get anxious and obsessive about getting a project finished and then things kind of go sideways, as my lovely wife likes to remind me, sometimes life steps in. And that's kind of where we are today. I'm anxious to get to Bagby. Only because I've not been there a while and it is part of our Yosemite Valley series. In fact, Bagby is going to be installment seven. So we did the research, made the plans, and of course, as I said earlier, life stepped in. So we're getting a really late start today, but I thought, you know what, instead of Instead of this dawdling away around, I have plenty of home projects to do, but instead of doing that, I wanted to get up here and visit a town I've not seen in a while, or at least have not walked in a while, and that is Hornitos. So we're going to check that out today. Did a little research on that and some surrounding areas, and let's, uh, let's just go for a quick walk. I've not been up here since pre-COVID, so it's been a few years. So let's go explore, and let's, uh, as always, let's see how the story goes. Alright, we're watching them, but they're also watching us. You gotta love this about these small towns, so I drove by this, uh, this earlier. And you see that tarp thrown over the, those are actually hay bales. And now I know why. Got the resident goats hanging out in here. There's actually a second one around the other side of it. And just to the right of them is this. This place has obviously seen uh, better days. And it's definitely uh, a little, it's a little worse for wear since I was here last. Yeah, these guys are definitely watching me. I got a little too close. Yeah, look, he's, he's watching us. Even the goats know when there's a stranger in town in these little communities. All right, we'll move on so we can finish this snack. So no story of Hornitos is really complete unless you first talk about Quartzburg, which, which we're headed there now. It's about two miles north of Hornitos. Hornitos basically was occupied prior to, uh, prior to 1851. Hornitos was basically occupied by a small group of miners from Mexico. And in about 1847, a guy named uh, John Burns and, uh, and his brother, along with his brother, which for some reason I can't remember his name now, they uh, established a small community of Quartzburg because there were a lot of mines up here. The Mexican miners already being in this area, they started a uh, establishing some mines up here. And being veteran miners, they were very successful. And there's some of the old rock walls that were, these were actually built by a lot of the Chinese miners and Chinese laborers. Rumor has it at about 25 cents a day. I've never been able to verify that, but I've read it in several places. Just remember the, the brother's name, Robert. So Robert and John Burns uh, established Quartzburg. It all it had an alternate name. They also called it Burns Diggings, I guess because of the gold mining that went on here. 
they even had a post office here from about 1851 to, from what, 1851 to 1861, I believe it was. So as some of the American miners uh, rolled into town, I guess this became kind of a, what they called a, a rough, and, rough and tumble town, rough and ready town. And some of the real, the rumors are that some of the, uh, or legend anyway, is that some of the real, real ruffians were just ran out of town. However, a lot of the Mexican miners have run out of town, and as the story goes, I guess there's a little bit of jealousy. They were they were very successful, but also this was about the time of the the uh, the Mexican American War. It ended just a few years before, and a lot of bad sentiment going on. So when the Americans came in, they more or less ran the uh, ran the Mexican miners out of town. So they moved two miles down the street to uh, to Hornitos. Here is the site of Kortsburg. Definitely not much here anymore. You can see, oh look, you can see a rock wall over there. Look at that. And that would have been more or less where we're driving would have been Main Street. And the story goes, once they uh, built J-16 through this area, which J-16, by the way, is a road run, um, that pretty much obliterated what little was left of Kortsburg. Another rock wall. Curious thing about those walls as well, again, they were built by uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese miners and Chinese laborers, and some of these walls, it is said, actually predate the Mexican-American War. So they've, they've been here a while. Again, this, again, this would have been the town site of Kortsburg. I read there's nothing left, and that definitely would appear to be the case. I was able to, uh, when I was trying to read about Kortsburg, I was reading a couple of sites on the internet about the mining that went on in this area. And just all around us here in these, in these hills, I was able to find just on that one website, there, there are about six different mines all within well, let's just say all within close proximity of where we are now. So back to our story. So as the Mexican miners were run out of town, they moved uh, two miles down the street towards Hornitos, which is where we're headed back to now. And when the mine started to run out, or I should say when the gold started to run out in Quartz Gold, or I'm sorry, Quartzburg, the other miners followed suit. And of course, that meant a lot of the uh, rough and rowdy population moved into Hornitos as well. And then, of course, it gained a population as rough and ready gold mining town. Uh oh. Uh oh. I don't think he's supposed to be out there. Look at that. That's a good, good sample. Good sample of one of the walls. Those are all over the foothills of, uh, around gold country here in California. I want to show you this exchequer. Exchequer. That road right there that does tie into our little uh, YV story. That road there, Exchequer Road, goes to, if you follow it around, oh yeah, there we go. There's Exchequer Road. You can see how it, yeah, you can see how it kind of goes along the base of the hills here. 
climbs that mountain range in front of us and continues on to the Exchequer Dam site. Another rock fence. I always do wonder which one of these predate this being part of the United States and which ones date back to when this was still uh, part of Mexico. There it is. The historical community of Hornitos. And there's definitely a few landmarks up there. We're, uh, we'll go read some signs here in a moment. I do wonder when the last time that gate was used. By the way, this is Burns Creek. And the homes we're rolling up to are, man, they're, they're built right on Burns Creek. Definitely seen a few floods back in the day. some impressive homes at one time. So we're looking looking north out of uh, basically as you leave town. This here was considered or this this area was said to be Chinatown and a lot of the old uh, mining camps and mining towns they were very segregated and the Chinese would typically uh, kind of congregate in their own little area of town. So all that remains here is the, uh, looks like maybe the front door. Looks like the foundation's behind it. I do wonder what era these things came from. You know, was that, uh, well, this obviously looked like this is definitely for farming. So I would assume this is as well, but who knows? This might go all the way back to, back to the mining era. Not much of a wind today, so who knows if that actually works or not. But it's still standing. And we're looking south into downtown Hornitas. sure what this is but it might be the ruins of a uh, an old water tower these guys are active and definitely making some noise Just along Main Street. It's an old general store. This is it's still open. It's uh, kind of been repurposed as a kind of a convenience store and uh, art gallery. I may have to stop in. And always a popular motorcycle road. So when you 
you think of uh, when you think of gold towns, the mother load, the California gold country, you often focus on when it was at its prime, at its peak, or at least when it was uh, at its at its historical point of notoriety. But then we often forget that some of these towns, they continue right on moving along, even after their prime. I'm reminded of that here with this fuel pump. Actually has the, uh, actually has the, uh, the globe up top. So you can see how much fuel is being dispensed. I did some quick research because I was just curious and apparently these things were popular in the early 1900s. So, you know, roughly about 19, 1905, 1910, all the way through the, like, the, maybe the 1930s and that's when they started going away. Yeah, this is good stuff, man. So I read that there were two general stores that dated back to Hornita's heyday back in the 1850s, 1860s, you know, basically during the, uh, during the gold rush time, timeline that we're, uh, we're talking about mostly today. But it looks like this one continued right on moving into the modern era. Or at least into the, uh, the era of the uh, internal combustion engine. So look at this thing. This is uh, this is something else. And as I was reading about these Look at that, contains lead. Oh, this is this is something else. Doesn't look like the original foundation beneath it, but so as I was reading about these back in the day, before you had the predominance of street lamps. In fact, in this town, you you still don't have street lamps. But they would have like a, a globe up top, kind of letting you know that, hey, there's fuel over here. So if you are, you are in desperate need of fuel, just look for one of the few lights in town and it's probably a, probably a fuel pump. More of those uh, old square-headed bolts and nuts. Man, look at these old hinges. And you can still hear those motorcycles off in the distance, climbing the hill. Okay, so now we're now we're going to talk about one of the two most famous residents of Hornitos. We'll start with the, the other one we'll get to in a moment. We'll start, start with Domingo Giardilli, who actually immigrated from Italy to Uruguay in like 1845, 46, something like that. And then from there um, came to the metal load, the, the, uh, the mining fields here in California, and decided that he would open a store to sell basically any of the goods that the, the miners might want, but mostly, most notably, and what would bring him to fame there were his chocolates. So this is Domingo and Giardilli's first store here in America, right here in Hornitos, California. 
and he would run this store from about 18, I believe it was 1848 until 18, 1850, 51. I'll find my notes and put those up on the screen for you. But he would run this store two or three years and his chocolates would be become obviously become very popular where he would then move to San Francisco which was a major port of entry for uh, for miners coming into California and also where a lot of the gold was uh, was sent to and processed so he would move from here to San Francisco and open his store there and the rest is history we all know how popular Jared Daly chocolates would uh, would ultimately become. But this is where it all started, right here. In little old Hornitos. And story has it that this was one of the most uh, one, of the, one of the most prominent stores here in town. So you had all the all the hell raising and riffraff going on in town at the Fandango Halls, but Jerdilly just quietly ran his store and perfected his chocolate recipe. And ultimately, probably like most merchants learned, the real way to make money in the gold country was, uh, was become a supplier of goods for those out in the, uh, out in the gold mines. Just a quiet little town. Kind of hard to imagine just how busy this place probably was back in the day. There's our post office, still functioning since, uh, in operation since 1851. Our local bar. I'm loving that sign. Mixed drinks on, off sale. So we got them here if you want them. The price, I don't know, apparently, apparently at the discretion of whoever's blending the cocktails. Fair enough, I suppose. And then over where this park is, I was reading that sign, there's a sign right there behind those rails. Where this park is now, that was at one time the Hornitos branch of the Wells Fargo Bank. Cool little fun fact. Oh wow, we actually got a car coming through town. Look at that. That's the first one to come through town since the motorcycles came by. I'm loving this, man. Look at this old, old phone booth. How cool is that? How cool is that? That's, look at that. Look at the... Look at the walls on this thing, that's nice. Just sitting out here in the town square. All right, little signage as you come into town. Hornitos, welcome to one of the most famous ghost towns of the 1800s. Hornitos is Spanish for little ovens. It got its name from the above ground graves that were shaped like the cooking ovens used in Mexico. We're, uh, I'll show you some of those here in a moment. Uh, during this time, population was about 15,000, wow. And had, had the first Wells Fargo Bank 40,000 in gold was shipped to the Mint daily. Wow, that does make me wonder just how much would that uh, translate into uh, modern currency, the value of modern currency. Hornitas was host to Joaquin Marietta, one of the most, or one of the most colorful bandits in California, which by the way, that's going to be our second resident that we get here get to here in a moment. And it says that it was uh, located in the heart of Mariposa County and uh, was the largest in California during the gold rush period, or 1849. Wow. All right. Let's, 
Let's look a little closer. It's another old, old buildings here. Wow. Mechanic Street. Rocky Point Ranch. Hard to believe there were one time thousands of people here. This place is quiet. I just, literally, just now found or heard the first resident walk outside of their home. Wow, this is a quiet, quiet town. All right, looking down into downtown proper. And this is the uh, backside of the of Dilly's store. And this is the jail. That signage has obviously seen much better days. I was going to uh, look inside the window, but it looks like it's been sealed off. Not a very big building. So apparently they either didn't jail a lot of folks or uh, they just put them in here and let them, let them figure it out on their own. Crowded or uncrowded. Make it work. Okay, so Joaquin Marietta was a, uh, historically they call him the, uh, the Mexican bandit that apparently roamed some of the, uh, now here's the thing with Joaquin, whether he was real or legend still seems to be disputed. But he did, if he was real, he did like to uh, hit the Fandango halls, which, I read that's what this was here. This is the, the ruins of a, a once thriving Fandango Hall. And if uh, the law came in looking for him or if he got in too much trouble, he would hit the underground, secret underground passageways between the Fandango Hall and other buildings, which there was one right here at one time. You can kind of see where it was. Foundations all grown over by grass. But there's a tunnel, which you can't see it anymore, I just checked, or I'd show you that. But there's a tunnel between where this building was here and the Fandango Hall, and that was, again, legend says, designed as an escape hall. The reality is more like this is where they would store the, store the booze and roll it in barrels into that tunnel into the Fandango Hall. Now, What's interesting about Joaquin, he was in Kortsburg at one time, working the mines there, and uh, when they chased the other Mexican miners out of town, he was one of the ones they chased out. That's how I wound up in Hornitos. And so as the story goes, legend or real, Joaquin was pursued and ultimately captured by law enforcement and killed in 1852. Here's a little better view of what was once a building. You can kind of see, yeah, you can kind of see some of the old ruins of the walls behind it. Oh, there's another cool little angle of Giardilly's store. Look at that. That had to be quite impressive back in the day. Something I participated in, I want to say two years ago, and pre-COVID, and that is the, uh, Day of the Dead event that takes place here every, I'm reading my notes by the way, yeah, I, I cannot, there's no way I can remember all this stuff. So no, every November 2nd, there is a Day of the Dead event, and we came up here a few, a few years ago and participated in that, that was fascinating. Um, in fact, I have some photos of that, I'll make sure I put those up on the screen. I even had video of that until I did a really bonehead move and inadvertently erased all that video but I'll put the photos up as I said earlier and let's uh let's go retrace this thing it's a lot more interesting when you're here at night yeah I like that. St. Catherine's Catholic Church. 
established 1860s. I'm curious if it's still in operation to this day. It's still definitely well taken care of, that's for sure. St. Catherine Catholic Church. It says the church was built during the 19, I'm sorry, 1860s, probably 1865. And before the church was built, priests came from Stockton to say mass for the people of Hornitos. P priests from Sonora and Mariposa came for mass after the church was built. In the 1930s, the church was repaired, adding a rock foundation and rock buttresses to make the church firm and solid again. And just for reference, so that was in the 1860s, long before the advent of automobiles in Stockton as a good, at least a good 60 miles away. Sonora would be the closest and that is probably in itself close to 30 miles away. Mariposa about the same. So that was quite a trek back in the day. I do like these buttresses, that's pretty cool. All right, so we're up here in the cemetery and all right, the, the procession I kind of showed you, well, I probably didn't do a very good job of showing you how, how it worked, but so right in front of us there, right in the center of your screen, there's a tree of course, but beyond that you see the roadway. That's the road we, we traveled coming up here. That leads to downtown Hornitos. So the way the procession worked is everybody would light their candles and walk along Main Street, turn up the hill, come up this drive, go through the gate that I took you through right in front of the church, and then proceed to coming to the cemetery grounds, which is where we are now. And then of course, light uh, light the candles and place them around the grave sites. On the headstones, anywhere, little, anywhere and everywhere. It was quite, an, and it was, it was a really impressive turnout. That's, that's what surprised me, is how many, just how many people showed up. So we had a lot of candles here. All right, so I'm gonna take a pause here for a, mo for a moment. I was curious about the history of uh, Day of the Dead here in Hornitos, and uh, here, here's some of the, the better notes I found on it. Uh, it's a tradition likely celebrated here when the town was founded by Mexicans driven out of their nearby, nearby village by miners, and of course that would be the uh, Quartzburg we were at earlier in the video. But during the gold rush, a rich van was found nearby and Hornitos was overrun with people from everywhere. In the 1850s, it became known as the wickedest spot in the mother load. And again, we talked about why that was. And uh, anyway, so they're saying that's thanks to the profusion of brothels, bars, and shootouts. The dead lost their day, indeed. So then in the late 1800s, a Donna, Can Donna Candelaria, a wealthy resident originally from Mexico, started the tradition of a profession to the cemetery, encouraging people of all religions and ethnicities to light a candle and remember. The first stop every year is to leave a candle on the grave of Candelaria, who died in 1903. That part I wanted to share with you because I've actually been looking for her gravesite. I've not found it. So we're, we're still a little ways from the gate as I slowly exit. So I'll continue to look to see where Ms. Candelaria was laid to rest. Died February 25th, 1888. That's, that's some time ago.
All right, now there's a good idea. Solar powered lights. Kind of an eternal candle, I suppose. Age 28 years. Yeah, that's something that seems to be a common theme of uh, back in the day. Looks like that's been here since, uh, yeah, that's a candle. That's probably been here since uh, November of last year, which would be about, only about two months ago. Look at this, you guys. Wow. Look at that. September 1866, October I love these old wrought iron pieces. All these died within, within just a few years of each other. And it looks like they're perhaps, uh, because they're in the same row and they're all uh, from Germany. Although not all of the last names are the same. Still have to assume they were uh, somehow related. Wow. Fascinating. I do remember this, seeing this before. When we were here for years ago for the uh, Day of the Dead event. Wow. This, uh, this is interesting in this series of uh, grave sites. Headstones. And then down here at the feet. This whole row. Interesting. The Day of the Dead. Candles everywhere. So as I was walking, I found this. He died in 1852. Wow, that is something. Look at that. Not much remains. But you can definitely see what they were working with here. There's the oven. That is, 
That is so amazing. These are the uh, definitely the best preserved I've seen, as in bad a condition as they are. They are the best preserved I've seen so far. And we're kind of coming to the end of this cemetery, which is interesting. It basically sits right on top of a hill, kind of a uh, prominent point above town, as I was showing you earlier. All right, so I think I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, yeah, this, it's not Bagby. It's not even Yosemite Valley Railroad and definitely not installment seven, but with our limited time, we made, made some use out of it. I looked a little closer at Hornitas than I have in quite some time and cool little video, I hope. So I hope you enjoy it. There will be a pause in the YV videos. We're, um, heading out of town for a little over a week and uh, actually going to the Big Island. That would, that would be Hawaii for the Big 6-0. So uh, yeah, I'm 60 years old, wow. So my lovely wife is taking me there for some, uh, some time off, time away. I may do a video, I may not do a video. I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll bring some gear with me and we'll just like every video, we'll, we'll see how the story plays out. So there will, but again, there will be a momentary interruption to, to the YV series. So installment seven is probably still a week or two out, but we'll, we'll get back to it. I, I'm, I'm very anxious to finish that. So it's turned into a, turned into a mission, you might say. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna call it good for today. From here at, uh, at Hornitas. I don't know if I've ever entered a video in a graveyard before. That might be a first. Hopefully that doesn't become habit for me. Then again, that might make an interesting habit. But again, thanks for tagging along and uh, we will see you in the next video, whether it's the YV or the Big Island. We'll, we'll see, but we'll see you then. I just thought of something as I was walking back to the car. Not, not even a year ago, we were up here, actually it was last winter at some point. We were set up right about here. I'll see if I can find the photo, but we were shooting a photo of the moon right through that bell tower, or at least very close to it. I'll see if I can pull those photos out. Yeah, it was a it was a good night. It was a good night. Great photos. We had some cloud cover, which really added to it. By the way, I was hoping for some cloud cover today. I really wanted to shoot some time lapse uh, from the cemetery, but Mother Nature decided to give us a beautiful blue sky instead. So. Who's complaining, right? <laughs>